أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا يزالون يقاتلونكم حتى يردوكم عن دينكم إن استطاعوا ومن يرتدد منكم عن دينه فيمت وهو كافر فأولئك حبطت أعمالهم في الدنيا والآخرة وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون I was just a normal American girl. I was a military brat. And my dad um, was, you know, a commander in the American Army. My environment was fairly normal. I had a good family. Um, wasn't into, you know, drugs, alcohol, the, the normal things that teens were into. I was very studious. And because of this, I got approached by a group of people whose main aim was to destroy Islam. They wanted me to go to the university that they had chosen, where I would study Quran and Hadith and basically learn how to play with the Quran and the Hadith. They wanted to put me in the American embassy in Egypt. When I graduated, I was supposed to study international relations, international law, and then, you know, work with the embassies. And they had people set up everywhere, all over the world. They wanted me to work with women's rights and basically take women away from Islam, try to destroy the Muslim families through the women. And this appealed to me. I thought the Muslim woman was oppressed. I thought the Muslim woman had no rights, you know, poor little desert woman covered from head to toe, living in a tent in the desert. Her husband comes home to his, you know, thousand wives and beats them all up. I really had a bad image about Islam. In order to learn about Islam, to destroy it, I had to learn what the real Islam was. I sat with a group of scholars who were uh, primarily Jewish and they taught me Quran, they taught me Hadith, and they taught me how to play with the Quran and the Hadith to try to take women away from Islam using uh, women's rights. The thing is, when you study Islam and you actually have in your heart the intention that you want to know the truth, the truth comes to you. And I fell in love with the Quran. And by falling in love with the Quran, I fell in love with Islam. I didn't want to be a Muslim because Islam didn't seem like something easy or nice to me. And if I became Muslim, I knew that I would lose the things that I had. I would not become a diplomat. I would not have money. And I'd probably lose my family. So what I did was I studied Christianity, I studied Buddhism, I studied all the different religions, and I still found that Islam was the truth. And alhamdulillah, because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after three years of intensive studying, led me to al-Islam. And alhamdulillah, today I'm a Muslim as a result, and I am very grateful to Allah for this. I would have to say my story is a story of plans. I planned, people that I was with planned, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned. After I became a Muslim, alhamdulillah, the people at the mosque, they came to my assistance. They, they were helping me with books, with information about Islam. They were giving me classes. There were families that basically almost adopted me. There was this one Moroccan sister, mashallah Zahra. She was a sweetheart. She became like a sister to me. Um, there was an Egyptian family. They took me in and they worked with me and everybody tried to help me to learn my deen, to learn Islam. And even though I didn't tell anyone that at that point my family had disowned me and I had no money and I had, you know, I'd lost my scholarship because, of course, they're not going to pay for my education if I'm not long, no longer going to be destroying Islam. So, subhanAllah, every few days I would find envelopes of money inside of my mailbox. And I know that the Muslim community was helping me. So yeah, I had a lot of help. 
And I, I love the way that the Muslims came together and they provided me true sisterhood. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ كذلك يجعل الله الرجس على الذين لا يؤمنون وهذا صراط ربك مستقيما قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يذكرون لهم دار السلام عند ربهم وهو وليهم كانوا يعملون